Good evening everyone. Welcome to Dave's Tackle Box on the 6th of November 2011. Uh, lots of stuff to look at tonight. Uh, and a surprise guest, assuming I don't mess it up. But about halfway through the show, we're going to have a guest. He's going to talk about something. <laughs> but tonight I'm going to be having a good close look at this thing, which is the Rock Star. Which we first saw at Vape Fest, and I know there's been a lot of discussion on the UK Vapors Forum, certainly about it. I've had mine for a few days, and uh, and I've got some news about the Rock Star as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. What else are we looking at tonight? We're also going to be looking at the Pure Smoker Prodigy. Let's face it, you knew when you heard I won it at Vape Fest that we'd be looking at that. Because that's rather good too. So, um, yeah, what else was there? I think that was it. So, let's get started. Uh, once again, I've moved everything around. I should just say, before we actually do get started, I've moved it. You might notice a slightly different camera angle. Well, I have moved all my equipment about. So, I'm really quite relieved that everything's working, actually. But uh, I'm frightened that I'm going to roll over a cable or something. And... Um, and I can't find anything in the way of stings and stuff like that anymore. Found it. So, if you saw my little video that I did of Vape Fest, uh, you'll have seen a, a section in there with uh, this guy who hopefully you can see in a little box just above my right shoulder. Uh, he's there at the moment. Uh, and this, he might very well be watching actually. So if you are, hello Greg. That's Greg Forster and he's the managing director of uh, the company that owns Rock Cigarettes, electronic cigarettes. Um, and obviously he was demonstrating the product. In fact, you can see him doing it there for the first time at Vape Fest a couple of weeks ago. And... Um, now, I'm going to be honest with you, I saw the brand name there, and I've always associated Rock with the little looky-likey e-cigs that we, we we all know and many of us don't think a great deal of. Um, and when he said, oh, they've got this new product, I, my, at first glance, I thought it was like an ego. And I thought, okay, so you're doing an ego type like everybody else. But um, I'm glad I paid attention because he let me try it, and uh, and I was rather impressed. So uh, So I've ordered one and as is the way these days uh, i got back from my trip to germany on late on thursday night it was waiting for me so friday morning i opened it up i even read the instructions for a change and uh, i got it going so uh, let's cut to another camera that one looks like it'll do i'm just going to zoom that in very slightly and move my mouse So when you order the uh, the Rock Star, it arrives in uh, this rather nice little box, very similar to most sort of ego type e-cigs. To be honest, seems to be fairly standard fare. You get some instructions, and then in the top there, there was a fully assembled uh, e-cig, and there was a spare pen cap, and I'll show you all that in a minute. Uh, and a spare what they call a liquid chamber and an atomizer in the bottom you get your charger you get a couple of these things and these are airflow control rings which is a little bit different to a normal ego isn't it uh, that that there is uh, an e-liquid chamber with a story which I shall tell you shortly. And then you get a bunch. I think uh, I think there were six, maybe five of these. Yes, yeah, six of those. They're mouthpieces. But I've got all that stuff out and set up on the one that I'm using. So just to show you what's in the kit, really. So in the kit, you get two rechargeable batteries. There's the 650 milliamp hour job. And then there's also a 900 milliamp hour, which has just finished recharging. 
So I'll just detach that and a 900, which obviously is a bit bigger. They both, the batteries, they feature the uh, click on and off. But unlike the Ego five click batteries, this is a three click. So to turn it off, you one, two, three, flashes a few times to let you know it's listened. And then that's disabled for when you shove it in your pocket. Three taps. And it's back on, and now the battery's now working. And you can see there on the top, you've got these rings in place i don't know why the spares are there i don't know whether that one's going to give up on me in time so far it seems fine but there's a spare for each battery effectively in the kit like i showed you if i hold that up next to um a regular this is this is a joy it's actually a janty ego i think it's a 900 milliamp battery as well so they're very similarly sized but you can see that the threads on the top are very different very different. This one will not take a tank. It will not take uh, an Ego cone. And I'll show you the bit that connects onto it in a moment. So the way this thing works is instead of attaching a cartomizer or a tank that we've got accustomed to know, uh, or an atomizer uh, to use with a cartridge or drip or whatever. You've got this tank that you can see assembled there, which they call an e-liquid chamber. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one apart. It's still got a bit of fluid in it, so I'm going to be a little bit careful about it and show you how you top it up. Uh, and then we'll have a look and I'll show you how it performs. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the little mouthpiece off the top. Um, and I'm going to turn it upside down, and the reason for that will become very apparent. When I detach the liquid chamber, the e-liquid chamber, I believe is the correct name for it. So I really should check. Yes, e-liquid chamber. Let's call it by its correct name. The top of it is wide open. So if I'd have turned that, taken that apart the other way up, all the juice would have come out, which would have been very clever. So I'm going to try and get the microscope camera in shot here. So you can have a proper look at what's going on inside. Uh, no, I was worried about that. It's packed up, so I'm not. <laughs> but it was a good idea, wasn't it? It was a good idea. So we'll stick with these two cameras. Uh, you may be able to see inside there that there is a central tube, which is where the vapor leaves the coil of the atomizer to get to the mouthpiece and then around the outside of that is where the juice goes that's not the best picture i wish i had the microscope camera so maybe if i shine a bit of light on that we can uh, make that a little bit more in useful yeah you can just about see inside there's a tube you don't want to put juice down there when you fill it because it'll all come out the bottom <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. Um, if you are using Rock's own juice, which I'm not going to be, but I'm going to show you anyway, the bottles that they sell have got... This is the absinthe that I picked up at Vapefest. And I mentioned this before. You can see it's got like a very long nozzle on the uh, dropper there, which enables you to get down between the tube and the side of the liquid chamber. So the liquid doesn't go everywhere. But I'm not using that juice at the moment because I already have some in there. So I'm going to use this orange. On the sides of the e-liquid chamber, you've got little windows that you can see. Uh, I must apologise. I was hoping to use the microscope camera for this. But we're going to have to manage without The little windows in the side let you see how much juice is inside, obviously. That's a concept that we're, we all know pretty well these days. Uh, and the recommendation in the instructions is to fill it no more than two thirds full. This one wasn't empty. I have gone over the two thirds recommendation and had no problems. Um, but as ever, if you choose not to follow the instructions and overfill it, don't blame me. Follow the instructions. <laughs> so that's 
two thirds full if you look at the little window there. You can see juice in the top. So obviously, if we turn that upside down, all the juice will come out. So you stand it that way. Just before I put it all back together, I shall show you the atomizer. Because it's unlike any atomizer that I've seen before. That's it. You can see on the sides there, there's two little bits of wick. At 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock if you like. Just sticking out the side there. And the coil is inside this metal case. If you look at the thread on the bottom, it is like a 510 size thread, but the outer rim of the atomizer is threaded. So I did manage to attach a cartomizer to the battery earlier, but it didn't screw all the way down and I wasn't going to force it and it wasn't really it wasn't really ideal. There was a big gap. The contact wasn't brilliant with a standard 510 atomizer. It was actually not a carto. So um I think pretty much with these batteries you use these atomizers and with these atomizers you use these e-liquid chambers. It is a pretty sort of uh, bespoke kit if you like. So following the instructions again you attach the atomizer to the battery and then you invert the whole contraption. And screw it down onto the top of the liquid chamber so it's finger tight I want to make that reasonably tight as well I've found the first couple of times I did it I was a bit delicate and uh, and a little bit of juice seeped out not a lot you know it wasn't hugely leaky or anything but I just hadn't tightened it up quite enough so there we go then you can stand it up the right way and put your whistle tip mouthpiece into the top like that. Clicks in and you're ready to go. So I'll just mention, um, I'll just line in the drip tip up with the button because I'm a bit OCD about things like that. Now, I've told you that the battery is three clicks on, three clicks off. Uh, the other thing you want to know about this battery is the lighting on the bottom. So if we do that, you may be able to see, maybe it's better on, on that camera. You can't really see. It is quite sort of discreet. As you're looking down the battery, it's a little bit more noticeable. But basically, there's three colours to the battery. Uh, on the LED at the bottom. And according to the, uh, the notes that came with it, uh, if it lights up blue when you press the button, if the LED at the bottom lights up blue, then you uh, have about 80% battery charge. And if it's orange, you have about 45%. And if it's red, it's at 10% charge and it's ready to be recharged. It, to use the words in the leaflet, and we'll need a full recharge soon. Mm. Sorry, I couldn't resist that. <laughs> Let's put that battery out of the way. Now, in practice, and I, and I uh, managed to catch a little bit of the vapor mist show uh, from last week, and I noticed they saw the same. I found it actually went red fairly quick. I uh, did it and then kept going, kept going, because with these regulated batteries, I don't worry about when they need recharging, because I've always got a spare, so I wait till they die. Then I swap them and put this one back on charge. And it did seem to be on red for a, quite a long period of time. Unless it was orange or something like that. I'll be honest with you, I haven't really paid much attention to what colour the LED has been. But it's, I suppose it's a useful feature. You know, if, if you're about to go out and you pick one up and it's red, then perhaps you want to take another one or something. But, you know, that's just something. The airflow control ring there. Um literally you just turn it it goes all the way around and it controls i'm holding up to a camera that you can't see which isn't particularly bright shall i try that again you see the airflow control ring there it's like there's a knurled bit there that you use to turn it and you can move it left and right 
and it controls the amount of air that travels through so thereby making it you can make it a very sort of loose or a very tight draw you can't quite fully close it which is good because that would be a bit pointless But well, that's like sucking a golf ball through a hose pipe. Um, but mess around, it really makes a difference, I found. A little bit of faffing about. And you can probably hear that through that mic now. That's probably a little bit loose now, so I'm going to just adjust it. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. Lovely. Now, as you can see, there's plenty of vapour comes off it. Um, I think uh, I was talking to Greg yesterday or the day before. We've spoken a couple of times over the last couple of days, and I'll explain why uh, shortly. But he told, I think he told me it was a 3.2 or maybe a 3.3 ohm atomizer. And that quite surprised me because it's actually got a bit of a punch uh, for an atomizer with that high resistance. Um, uh, in terms of the throw tip that it's giving, okay, I like something a little bit rougher, but I generally use atomizers half the resistance of this. Um, now, if I compare this to something like a clearomizer, for example, or a CE2, CE3, or a Bud Sapphire or something like that, I find this is much better in the throw tip department. The flavour that I'm getting from the juice is, it's a hell of a lot better than a CE2, a CE3, or a Bud Sapphire. I mean, it really is as close to dripping as I've come across. The, the only thing that, that, that I've found that actually rivals this would be the Ultramax when it's working, uh, or the GGTS, the, the UFS, where you're getting like pure joist to the coil. Um, there's no sort of filler or anything like that in here. It seems to be the best of both worlds, to be honest with you. Now, as you can tell, I like it. I like it rather a lot. I knew I was going to like it because I tried it at VoteFest. And I thought, I'm going to have me one of them. Um, so, that's all the good things about the Rockstar. I like the name as well. I think that's kind of good, actually. <laughs> but um, that's the good things. I did find a couple of negative points. But I also got some good news as well. But, but let's start with... Um, Let's start with one thing that, about it that, 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 that I noticed. Two thirds of the tank is not quite a milliliter of juice. I'm not sure what the total capacity would be if you decided to fill it all the way up to the top. But you saw that little plastic tube in the centre of the tank. You don't want to get the juice too high and too close to the top of that, I think, or else some's going to go down. So... Following the instructions of filling it to two thirds of the way up that window is not quite a milliliter of juice. Uh, it'd be nice if it was a bit bigger, especially uh, given that it is, you know, it's it's not, it's not huge. It's not it's not ungainly, but it's quite a big device. So when they come out with a bigger tank, a bigger e-liquid chamber for this, I, I'm going to be pretty close to the top of the queue I think because if they can come out with a bigger tank that gives the same flavour I'd be very interested but I really am nitpicking you know um, it's still excellent I don't know how many these chambers I've got through I, I, at least five or six in the last couple of days um, yeah I've used it pretty I've been at my desk for most of the weekend and it's all I've used It really is hard to put down, but I'm going to, because I've got a story to tell you. And the story concerns this chamber. 
that chamber, and it's a real shame the microscope cams broke, <laughs> because I wanted to show you. Um, I st I've forgotten to show you one more feature, and that is these pen caps. So I'll just turn that off. You turn the battery off, and with all of these tanks, I always get a bit nervous that they're not very solid to put in your pocket or whatever. If you watch my vape fest video, you will have seen Greg demonstrate that it comes with a pen cap. So the battery's now disabled. There's a pen cap there. A clip in your in your jacket pocket. Shove it in your jeans pocket. Whatever. That really is a nice transportable object. Let's just move it to one side and concentrate on that for a second. Now this is one of the e-liquid chambers that came um, in the original kit. And I filled it up and I did what you always do when you're thinking about reviewing something. I, um, I filled it up. I uh, put the mouthpiece on the top, I used it for a couple of drags, thought yeah that's working okay. I tried the battery with the three clicks and then what I did, I put the cap on and then when I pulled the cap off, which was pretty much immediately, instead of uh, just snapping off so I could use the device again, what actually happened was Let's just get another one of these chambers to show you. You see this little metal cap here? There's a little bit of sort of um, polyester wool or something in the top there. And I think the pur purpose of that is probably to grab condensation, I'm not sure. Uh, the, the little bit of filler there, the metal cap, stayed inside the top. It broke. So Dell, you wanted to see me break something. I'm afraid I didn't get it on film. But inside there <laughs> is the top and the filler off there. Now, so my first thought was, oh man, I've broken it already. And then my second thought was, hang on a minute. I read the instructions. I followed the instructions. I'm going to call. So I went on to Rocky Universal's website and I spoke to a nice lady and said, look, I've just broke it, it just fell apart on me. Uh, and she said, somebody will call you back. And within 30 minutes, I got a call back from Greg Forster, the guy you saw at the beginning of this interview, of, the, of this review. And Greg said to me, uh, right, he said, there has been a little problem. And uh, he told me that, basically, that the tanks, the e-liquid chamber that I was sent they weren't supposed to get sent. Let's uh, try the right camera. They, so these ones, which look very like this one with the uh, sort of chrome coloured cap, top and bottom. It's a collar, I think Greg referred to it as. Um, they were the wrong ones. <laughs> and, and it's interesting, really, because um, they have actually redesigned those chambers. And a, a rogue box or something got slipped in at the factory. And some of us got the ones with the uh, metal top and bottom. When in truth, what they were planning on shipping out were these, where there's no collar at the bottom. It's slightly different design. Um, I mean, they're essentially the same size. But Greg and I got talking. He obviously sent me these as replacements. Um, and uh, we got chatting. And it turns out that rather than, not just the uh, collar on the bottom of here, that's not the only change uh, that, that's coming up um, or should already be out there if I understood correctly. Um, but there are other changes in here as well. Uh, not least of all, uh, the fact that this, this new design doesn't use polycarbonate. So I uh, mentioned last week on my show, obviously, the concern about juices dissolving uh, some plastics and polycarbonates and clearomizers and stuff like that. and um, So that was quite interesting to, to hear that. Um, 
Greg was telling me he took uh, one of the juices that, that was known to cause a problem with this type of chamber uh, and filled it up, filled one of these up with that that very same juice. I can mention which name, which juice it was. Yeah, it was the Vermilion River cherry stuff that, that, that was mentioned on the UK Vapors Forum as being a culprit. Uh, and it's been stood there for several days and is absolutely fine. And this is what we were supposed to get. So, so it's some good news anyway, because uh, obviously uh, they've sold all the kits at the moment and they're awaiting some new ones for a proper launch of the Rockstar on the 18th of November. Uh, and they'll all include these. But there's a couple of other little designs as well that are going to change. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, oh bugger, I've just spent 40 odd quid on something and it's already out of date and there's a better version and all the rest of it, do not despair because I've got a message for you from Greg <laughs> shortly. Um, another change that they're making, and I'll get the, uh, the unused atomizer if I can find it, he says. If I can find it, here's an atomizer. So this is the uh, the original designed atomizer that I showed you before. Flip cameras again. Um, they're basically uh, that's got quite a sort of hefty base. Uh, this this bit at the bottom. The the new atomizers that they're bringing out uh, that that will be available on the newer kits will have a much shallower base by a couple or three mil was the way Greg explained it to me uh, which basically makes the whole thing look a bit less cumbersome and clumsy here yeah so if you you see the, there's three sections there there's the air flow ring there's the bottom of that e-liquid chamber and then there's the the atomizer there the atomizer is actually going to get a couple of three mil uh, shallower so uh, so it should look a little bit a little bit sort of sleeker. I've managed to get some juice on my fingers from somewhere. It's probably this dead one. Um, uh, and in order to accommodate that, there'll be a new top coming out as well, which is slightly longer than the existing tops. Presumably, by the difference between the old and the new atomizer type. So, and this is where it gets interesting. Um, Greg obviously uh, acknowledges that these chambers were not the ones that should have gone out. Uh, certainly that's what I've got, and I'm sure there are several other people watching who've got the same chambers. Certainly those people who are getting their chambers eaten by juice. So Greg uh, has told me today that what they're going to be doing is for everybody who bought one of the first batch of kits not everybody got the wrong stuff uh but to use greg's expression it's like searching for a needle in a haystack to know who got the right ones and who got the wrong ones so but everybody who bought um a a kit so far basically from that first batch that's now sold out uh they're going to be sending out um two new of uh, what they call the stealth chambers that's the proper one. So you get two new chambers, two of the new atomizers, and I think he said two of the caps. I think he said two caps. Greg, if uh, I may be wrong about the caps, it might have only been one cap. But basically, if you bought one, you can relax. <laughs> You're going to get all the new kit, uh, including the improved atomizer and the new caps. Uh, I think Greg said there'll be an email first to let you know what's going on and um and there you go so always annoying when you buy a new product and it falls apart on you <laughs> but these are e-cigs they mostly come from china and anybody sitting there in the chat room watching this will know that that happens uh, at that point what matters to me is when i pick up the phone and i say i've had the problem it's what happens from there that, that matters to me and let's face it that's pretty good customer service uh there's a lot of people sitting out there with these things who might not have a pro they might have the old stuff and it will never give them a problem uh or they might even have the new stuff 
but to uh, to put everything back on a solid footing, Rock are going to send everybody two atomizers, two of the new chambers, and two new caps. You can't really ask for much more than that, can you? So, uh, so well done, Rock. Um, I'm using this, as I say, and I'm loving it. If the improved stuff is going to make it better, then what have you got to lose? Um, I had a little check just before I came on air. Uh, and just to make sure I've got all my little notes. Uh, yeah, it's forty four ninety nine is the is the price of the kit. So, you know, it's fairly comparable to Ego kits and what have you. Um, and in my opinion, it's a better vaping experience than, than an Ego kit. Uh, whether it turns out to be as reliable and stuff, it's a bit soon to say. I've only been using it for three days. Uh, the website address is Rock Universal. That's R O K Universal. Co. Uk. They're great. So that's my take on these. I'm just gonna have another little drag on this. Can turn the battery on first. That'll make it work better. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad, is it? I mean, you can see the vapor and you should taste it. It's really good. So anyway, that's the Rock Star uh, from rockuniversal.co.uk, as I say, 44.99. I like it quite a lot so uh, there we go now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a couple of trailers and then I'm going to bring somebody in uh, to talk about something else so uh, I'll see you in a minute Okay, so that's uh, the Vapor Mists and the Witching Hour up tomorrow night and the night after. But you probably know that already. Um, right, I'm just going to reminisce a little bit now. Uh, I'll just This is very, very, very short VT, um, which you've seen before, but I mixed it up again. It's like a different, it's like a director's cut. That's what it is, right? With, with, with some different music. I just want to jog a few people's memories. What you, what you want, what you, what you want. Altogether, 
www.vapeworld.co.uk One more time for luck. www.vapeworld.co.uk Co.uk. <laughs> There's always one. There's always one. It happened to you. <laughs> uh, Co.uk. Uh, so, for those of you who wondered what that joke was about in the chat room over the last month, that's where it came from. That was, of course, a the Midlands Mini Meat, um, which you could probably make a nice logo out of, couldn't you, with the three M's? Um, and I'm intending now that Vape Fest fever is dying off uh for for a little while uh i intend to organize another one um in uh late february or early march of next year so uh keep an eye on the forums and stuff uh and i'll figure out how we're going to organize that this time because predicting numbers could be a bit tricky but my initial thoughts are we go back to where we were last year it was sort of um it, it, it seemed a reasonable venue um but uh more news on that but obviously before then we've got um we've got another meet coming up because i like these meets they're good you know i've been to a couple of eight fests and that one and i go to another one on saturday so um check this out Right, and joining me now, that side, <laughs> is somebody you recognise. It's Dave Dawn, everybody. The high fi stood. Now, Dave, you've organised this this little shindig, knees up, which I thought was rather clever. Yes. Knees, knees I'll just explain it for people like Willow Fairy. Like, that's <laughs> like, it's not like your knees, it's like N-E-E-S, North East East Smokers, you see. It's clever, isn't it? So, oh, and somebody's just commented that we should have called it that. Well, I have been. We did. <laughs> There'll be a few seconds delay, and then you'll realise. <laughs> so, and, and Willow says thanks for explaining. But Dave, tell tell us what's going on on Saturday, mate, and not least of all because I need to get there. Um, it, it's it's going to be. It's just a meet up. It's just like minded folks getting together in a place that's got really rather pleasant food. And um, I'm a man for the food, you know. There are one or two of us. There it's may good. be a bit of blurk versus grub. Um, right. There may be a challenge going to happen between raw veg and myself, a race, to eat a pulled pork sandwich with French fries, <laughs> followed by a stack of uh, pancakes with bananas and maple syrup, and then vape two mils of RY High Five. That seems like a decent kind of challenge, that well, kind of it thing. It does, it does. But can I? Just, can you just explain, like, for the educated, uh, what a pulled pork sandwich is? It's a sandwich made with pulled pork. Let me rephrase that. What's pulled pork, Dave? <laughs> pulled, <laughs> pulled pork has been cooked to the tenderest possible way. And then, you know, like, you get the uh, Cantonese duck thing that you roll together. Yes, in, in a pancake. Yes, yes. Um, well, it's aromatic. like that. It's not sliced; oh, it's shredded. I see. Okay, so so it doesn't explain to some torture that the pigs are subjected to beforehand, or well, that just depends on who's chasing it, really. <laughs> um, so, but yes, Ben Ben at UK E Liquid has promised us the E hooker. Yes, I heard something about a hooker that eight people can have a go on at one time. Uh, that should get them through <laughs> the doors. Yep. Yeah. You obviously have been to Grange Town then. <laughs> and is that confirmed now, did, did I hear? 
I've not been able to get hold of him. Um, I don't know why. I, I, I don't know what he's doing. I've got no clue, but I'll get hold of him and I'll confirm that up. Indeed. Uh, he might even come with it. It depends. That'd be cool. Um, and, and Paula said she might get up as well, but have to say it, Paula's going to be tied up on the Friday night at the Hull meetup. Indeed. Are you going down to that one in the end? Well, given the, given the start time and the get back time and the fact that I've got to run around all over the place, I'm going to be running around like a blue ass fly. Right. I don't know that I'm going to be, I would love to have gotten down for that one and I had intended to go, but um, there, are, there are other issues happening up here that have got nothing whatever to do with vapour trails or anything else, sure, sure. basically the sale of a house that are causing the odd headache. So I may not get the time. If I can get the time, I'll go. If I cannot, I won't. Um, but yes, it should be a cracking night. I'm looking forward to it. Went down there tonight um, for a guacamole burger um, and one of the <laughs> nicest uh, sticky toffee puddings I've had in a long time um, and, and showed them the advert, the, the trailer that you'd come up with, which thrilled them no end. Oh, yes, um, the trailer. <laughs> and gave them a rough idea of the numbers. Yeah, what did you say just out of interest? <laughs> I said it'd be around about 30-ish, maybe. Cool. Cool. 30, we should do 30. I think we might do more. Excellent. They, they better have a lot of pancakes, is all I can say. And a lot of pulled pork. A lot and of pulled beer. pork, yeah. <laughs> root beer. No, that's foul stuff, that is. All right. Well, there, there you are, you see. It's, it's, it's Marmite. It's menthol. It's root beer. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Dave, thanks ever so much for joining us. Um, not a problem. I'm not, I know you're... you're very busy, probably, with pulled pork and things like that. I don't know. I was actually up to my eyeballs watching a, a television programme, um, Dave's Tackle Box, The Happy Vapor. Have you ever I've seen, seen it? that? It's crap. <laughs> really? I mean, apart from anything else, you never even see a tackle box. <laughs> well, it, it, I, I kind of like the bloke that does it. He's, when, you know... <laughs> He's got, he's got, I mean, the great thing about this bloke that does this show, he kills things on screen live. And I haven't brilliant. yet, tonight. Tonight I've killed nothing. <laughs> it's young yet, young pad one, the show's not over. Apart from my microscope camera. <laughs> it has to be something. It doesn't seem to be working at all. I've tried smacking it while we were playing the trailers and everything, it just hasn't helped. So that, uh, That'll be... I'm sorry, but Safer Sigs has just said that Dave is pulling his pork ready for Saturday. Wait till Thursday, does. I've yeah, got an advert coming up for that's you. That's taking liberties, that is, isn't it? You know, so Just a little bit. He may very well be our new, one of our new advertisers. So uh, everybody scroll down the page and look at his ad. Aye, and, click and, on and it. And after, click it. Stay here click till on. I finish, then click it a lot. Click the adverts. <laughs> and then when you get there, buy stuff. <laughs> Good lad, that's what we like to hear. Okay. Support our advertisers; they support oh, us. I've got, I've got Daz on Skype now. He says checks in the post. Cool. <laughs> Hang on, that's one of that's one of the three biggest lies, Dave. Yeah, yes, and I know the other two. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I love you. Checks and, in the post, and I promise no. I won't. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, we share the same, a similar deprived backgrounds, clearly. Well, depraved. Depraved and deprived. Mm. <laughs> Dave, thanks ever so much. I'm going to let you go because I've still got to review this Pure Smoker Prodigy 3.1, no doubt. No less. Does it take an 18650? No. I, I may have initially suggested that it did. But it doesn't. It takes a 17.6. What am I telling you this for? Watch. Keep watching. I'll let well, you go. Well, I was just going to... Because I'm going to get you converted to VV. You reckon? I am. It's a 17.670 it takes. Oh, well. Bring an 18.650 mod with you. I think I might be able to find one. He says looking at about six. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> right, oh, Dave. Thanks ever so much. So that's uh, this Saturday, the 12th of November, 6 o'clock till 10 o'clock. Six o'clock or ten o'clock, yes. We've got to be out by ten. The OK Diner. See how prepared I am tonight. Uh, A19 southbound. That's going to be yes. a bit of bugger for some of us, isn't it? U-turn. Half a mile <laughs> up the road. I think I actually know where it is, funnily enough. Uh, and that's, is it Elwick or Elick? Elwick. Elwick. 
Uh, Hartley Pool. Alec, Alec, if you're drunk. Hartley Pool. Or you can go onto UKV or the Vapor Trails TV uh, news channel, uh, YouTube channel, and the little trailer is up there. And when you get to the end bit, you can pause it and write it down. I've even put the postcode and the phone number on there for you. Yeah, indeed. And another shout out for the hull, mate. If you can't get up for the knees up. I, I'm really sorry that I don't know the uh, the details of that, but I know that it's been talked about on UK Vapors. So it's all over UK Vapors, yes. You go into the regional groups forum, and uh, they are the Hull and East... No, what is it? Yorkshire, East Yorkshire group? Yes. Yeah. You'll find yeah, it. You, it's not hard. On, on the Friday night, you go to Hull in a handcart. <laughs> and with that, we'll say bye-bye, Dave. Dave, thanks very much, mate. Welcome, cheers, mate. Ta-da. See ya. Uh, let's carry on with a couple of trailers. Oh, no. It's that bloke again. Good evening, everybody. Hey, up. Are you all right? Hi, we'll be right there. Put a silly hat on. You're right, Simon. And good evening, one and all. You know, with tonight's VT Talk. And quite a few questions coming in already. One on. Yes, going on. Oh. in two. Now, that was Dave Dawn, and I've got a slight wire cast problem here, so I'm really hoping that you guys can hear me. Really hoping that you guys can hear me. Oh dear. Ah. Um. You can hear me. Oh, brilliant. Uh, yes, uh, the software we are using to broadcast this has crashed. And in quite a big way. <laughs> so what you can see now is what we're going to have till the end of the show, which fortunately isn't that far away. Uh, right. Um, I picked this camera and I think yeah, it's probably a reasonable choice, actually, because I want to talk about... This thing, which is the Pure Smoker Prodigy V3, as it says on the bottom. There we get the right way up. Uh, you just see it says V3 on the bottom, and it's actually the 3.1, and I can I even know why that is actually. So I'm just going to swing a beer. Hang on. You should see my screen. It's not pretty. Right. Um, this is the Pure Smoker icon. And it's the little brother. Or little sister. You know, I'm not sexist. I don't mind. To the prodigy. Now, regular viewers will know. And even some people who don't view regularly will know. <laughs> that I won the icon in a raffle at the 2010 Vape Fest, and I won the Prodigy in a raffle at the 2011 Vape Fest. So, I, these two mods cost me a combined 
I think it was 15 quid. <laughs> so I think they're rather good value for money. Um, unfortunately, you're not going to get them for that price. Uh, I checked and the Prodigy is currently retailing. Uh, you get them from cloud9vaping.co.uk, another uh, advertiser with uh, VTTV. And this is 75 quid at the moment for the base kit. Okay. Um, what makes it a version 3.1 as opposed to a 3 is the switch. So the um, it really is a little mini copy or or the, the, the icon is a mini copy of the Prodigy or the other way around. It's not a new mod. It's been around for a while. But what they did probably about six months ago more is they changed the mechanics of the switch. If you hunt around on my YouTube channel, uh, and also in the VTTV archives and search for icon switch upgrade or something like that you'll see that I converted this from the original switch mechanism to the one that you can see now and that's what makes it a point 0.1 so this is the icon version 1 with the 1.1 1 .1 switch and this is a 3.1 because it's got the new switch I hope I, I hope I described that in an intelligible way. The 3 had an old type of switch. The 3.1's got a new kind of switch. You could buy an upgrade kit to convert your 3 to a 3.1. That was the easiest, easiest way of saying it, wasn't it? Um, as I was just discussing there with Dave, it doesn't take an 18650 battery, which I always thought it did. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, zoom this camera in, because that can't crash anything, he says, hopefully. Yeah, people who wanted me to break something, I've broken the software. I love this mod in the same way as I love the icon because it has, it, it, it's just so well engineered and uh, it, it's totally mechanical. There's no circuitry or rubbish in there to go wrong. It's just straightforward and simple. You've got a really well made switch. Uh, it's fully adjustable, so you can adjust the throw on the switch to whatever you want it to be. Um, it takes a 17670 battery, which I happen to have a little stock of because I have an Ultramax and I also have a GGTB. It's a good tight fit, that battery, isn't it? The threads on it are even better than the Icon. I guess because this, this is the new, newer version, this is the V3 and the Icon was the original version 1. Um, they, they've definitely improved the threads on it. Um, it's just brill. <laughs> it really is a lovely mod. Another thing that they've done between the old versions and the new uh, is... Uh, just check that camera's not going to play up on me. Um, you can see the the, uh, the caps. One criticism, and I've said this in reviews before, one, one problem I have with the icon uh, is the cap there. Once you attach your atomizer to it or whatever you're using, um, uh, let's just say you're using an atomizer and dripping it, anything that spills out goes straight down the side. So if you get any juice leaks at the bottom of your atomizer, straight down the side there horrible sticky mess so one thing and i remember uh, lisa telling me this when these things when this version was coming out they've actually changed that now there is actually a well so that's that's an improvement and i'm wondering if i can get that cap for my icon because that would be nice you can see there's now a little well around the side so it is i was going to change cameras then but i can't no, I can't, which is a pain. Let me just, um... no. <laughs> so we're going to have to manage with this one. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, drip some juice. And tonight's juice of choice will be RY High Five. Drippy drip, drip, drip. That's a one and a half ohm atomizer I've got on there. And I shall borrow a drip tip from this cartomizer. 
I do apologise for the fact that uh, I'm squashed into the corner of the uh, the screen there. But I can't do anything about it. So, there it is. I mean, I think that looks fantastic, frankly. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It's no bigger than it needs to be. You've got the adjustable switch. You can lock the switch just by turning it like that so it doesn't fire when you put it in your pocket. There you go. It just kind of works. Mm hmm. I tried to blow some vapour for the other camera, but it's a bit far away. Because <laughs> there's nothing going on here. We need something to look at, don't we? There. There's some other mods. Just to fill that shot up a bit. <laughs> That worked. There's a bit of a white out. Um, right, yes. So I'm, I'm kind of stuck now because nothing else is going to play. I'm going to try one last thing. But I don't think it's going to work. No. It has now totally died on me. The fact that we're still broadcasting is a bit of a miracle. But yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to wrap up <laughs> because we're stuck. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching. There's going to be no closing credits because they're stuck. Um, you're not going to see the last of the trailer or the little VT I had because they're stuck. I'm going to sit here and vape and drink beer technology eh yay for kits and show sadly i can still read chat <laughs> i have no idea what happened it was when we dialed dawning it was fine until then <laughs> right i'm out of here bye bye guys I don't even know if it's going to stop. Let's try it. Oh, 30 seconds he's telling me. I'm nearly at the end. I'm going to sit here in uncomfortable silence. Or maybe not. Is it actually moving? Yes. <laughs> I give up. <laughs>